Yeah, speaking of passion, when you want to bring love into the world, sex is obviously also a topic, you know, it's kind of, I heard it's going together pretty well. Our crazy drunk friends, they had like these most interesting sex lives and then so we just read them and said, can you write that down, what you just told me, because this story is insanely interesting. <laughs> I'm gonna introduce us real quick. I'm Annie, I'm 36 years old. We basically never speak publicly. My English is so and so, so excuse me for being the weirdest person ever. Same here. Oh, I'm married. I don't know if this is important to you. I'm married, I have a child. You will, you will understand why it's important. Um, and this is my best friend for 16 years. Yes. Jesus, very long time. Um, this is Yule, she's 37, she just got into a relationship and they might move in together. I'm very excited, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and we found it in Gegenteil uh, five and a half years ago, maybe six? Yeah, 2013. Jesus. That was a time we call um, the pre-Tinder time. Sure. Um, it seems Tinder and all of the other apps have been around forever but they launched in 2014. So even before that, I was really upset with the online dating platforms that were out there. I somehow didn't have the guts to chat up people in a bar. It was really, really hard for me to find a partner. Yeah, um, you were old. You were like 30 and you didn't want to get drunk every weekend like yeah. we did in our 20s. I mean, come on. <laughs> exactly. And I, I, I thought like um, all of these like parship, all of this parship stuff, it was like old fashioned. It was yeah. expensive. The cool kids weren't on there. Um, and it was also embarrassing. Like if someone else saw that you were on there, it was like, ah, nah. Cringe. Um, so yeah, so I said, I really want to find a boyfriend. And Annie said, no problem. Let's build a platform for that. <laughs> <laughs> and spoiler, I found several boyfriends on there. <laughs> I can confirm, happily. <laughs> yeah, so um, what you can see on the right side is the first um, uh, draft I did. Like we were sort of into Justin Bieber back then um, <laughs> for Im Gegenteil. Um, and that was the first image that we released um, back in the day. And what we wanted to do was um, be an alternative to other platforms out there. Um, and be as slow and analog as possible, but still on the web. <laughs> All right, so let's show people what we did um, and what we still do. So this is us. Eula is the lady with the camera and um, I'm the lady sitting there. We would go to people's homes. Uh, you know, we would take a lot of time, go to people's homes and um, just basically do a home story. We will be in their places for three to four hours and ask them everything, like the normal questions one would want to know when you're dating. And also we would ask them all the weird stuff because, you know, it comes out eventually anyway. So I would just ask, you know, what, why did your ex-partner leave you? And they could tell me and then I could, ah, I hear myself weirdly double, but is it okay? Yeah, good. So yeah, for us it was very important to have this friendshipy atmosphere. We wouldn't come in and be like, hi, I'm a photographer, hi, I'm a writer, you know. We As would we usually do otherwise. <laughs> never. <laughs> no, we would come in and be like, hi, you know, hug people. People will be so different. Some people would have the sweatiest hands and be like, oh my God, this is really happening, I'm dying. And other people would be, you know, very happy about it and very uh, self-conscious. No. Confidence. Confident. 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 I told yeah. you my English. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, we decided we wanted to do all that for free because we thought love shouldn't cost a dime. Um, that sort of sucks and it should be available um, to many, many people. And um, yeah, that's, that's how we started. <laughs> Are you done with your part? I'm totally done okay. with my well, part. I'm, like, <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm done. I have more, well, <laughs> sorry. I have more slides here. Wait, quickly going to show you that's how um, the website looks like right now. So we have all of the portraits and we also have a magazine part, which we're going to, and also a sexy part, we're going to talk about in a bit. Yes. Um, and that's an example. Well, I cut it together weirdly. I'm, unfortunately, I'm not a designer. Um, so this is sort of what we do um, picture wise. And we love gifts and you have a contact form in the end. So you don't even have to sign up to, to write someone. Yeah, and it was very important for us to have high quality photos and you know to have a funny and witty text about the person. Um, because you know if someone can cook really great or does anything else really great, and you would put that on Tinder, like I'm the best at, but if I write it, I can totally write it. You know, I will say, you know, this person makes the best cake or makes the best jokes and um, then it's fine. And as you can see, we have the contact form in the end. And everyone, you don't have to sign up, you don't have to do anything. Um, everyone can write the singles in the end. Um, yeah, and when we had the idea, we thought, well, it must be out there somewhere, combining like glossy home stories with online dating. But there wasn't anything like it. Um, and we really liked the idea. We pulled through with it, and um, the press also really liked it. So um, I think on the first day, all of the blogs started picking up the idea, and then all of the press followed, um, which was slightly flattering. <laughs> um, we had pieces in, in The Guardian, um, in Le Monde. Um, we did Side Magazine, a, a cover story for them. Um, yeah, and we did TV. We did RTL. I don't know if, if TV is still a thing. We I don't did know. We and did the trashiest, shitty show ever, and we absolutely regretted it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we also did, which was way shittier, Mieten kaufen wohnen oh, and yeah. Astro TV oh. breakfast. Uh, oh, that fancy. wasn't shitty. No, no, no. That wasn't shitty. They read our hands, our palms, and they were like predicting our future. Crystal skulls. I remember I, crystal that skulls. That was pretty cool. Anyway, our, our main concern was that um, we didn't have much money. It was just the two of us. So we thought if someone else with more like woman power or, or money would do the same thing, um, we didn't have a chance to, to actually grow bigger than yeah. them. Um, so that was a strategy to do as much press as possible. <laughs> oh God, yeah. Um, so yeah, we had this very idealistic idea. As I said, it doesn't cost any money. Um, and our whole purpose was to spread love, starting with Yule and then with everyone else we could portray. Um, so then we had this very quickly, this very well-read magazine because, as Yule said, the press and a lot of other blogs um, all over the world, but mostly in German speaking, picked up. We didn't have a business plan Oops. whatsoever. My dad and your mom, they were like a little bit onto us and we were like, let's just have us spread some when love. They, when they saw Side Magazine though, yeah, they were yeah, like, yeah. maybe you're doing something right. Yeah. <laughs> well. But still, you know, we had no, no business plan, no money, but we had a lot of passion. I think for the first two years, we worked six or seven days a week. We would portray, we ourselves, this is so crazy, would portray six to, yeah, five to six people a week, which takes a whole day, which is sort of nuts if you interview so many people a week. Um, yeah, but we had this whole passion. And yeah, speaking of passion, when you want to bring love into the world, sex is obviously also a topic, you know, it's kind of, I heard it's going together pretty well. So um, we quickly decided in our magazine section um, to publish cool, witty, like bold articles about sex. Ah, there you can see it. Um, and people would read them like crazy. They were the most well-read articles on our website. And Facebook back then when we started was still a thing and they had like zero likes on Facebook. What They were so very well-read. And I think people are, were still ashamed or are still ashamed to like a post like, like a very erotic or graphic content like that because they're ashamed their friends might see it. Um, yeah, and we just, as you can see here, published our first very erotic piece about men-on-men um, -men content. We are very happy about that. Um, 
Yeah, and since our se I'm married for forever, I'm having a sex life, gentlemen, but um, our friends, our crazy drunk friends, they had like these most interesting sex lives. And then so we just read them and said, can you write that down, what you just told me? Because this story is insanely interesting. And um, yeah, that's what they would do. Our friends would start publishing uh, these uh, hot, sexy texts. And uh, I think a lot of them got picked up for a book deal for erotic novels, for example, after they published, because all the um, Falage, whatever that is in English. Publishers. Publishers, ah, yeah. Uh, all the publishers uh, would read our uh, magazine and then pick good writers up on our platform. Your part. Yeah, and <laughs> thank you. Um, and the sexy content was actually the first income stream we had and is still one of the most reliable ones we have right now so um sex brands came up to us and said can you advertise our condoms our sex toys our online shop and that's what we did a lot um <laughs> for us. i see yeah, people you. from the audience and it's not me but i see me um we also declined a lot of offers because obviously in the, in the, in the sex uh, uh, um, world you, you get a lot of really weird stuff. Um, so we always... Um, penis enlargement pills. Many yeah, penis for enlargement example, pills. For example. We did, never did that. Would have been a click hit maybe. Maybe. Um, yeah. And I think the important stuff is that we are not a, a porn magazine. Um, but we still have very explicit content. And I think we reach readers that wouldn't usually search for that kind of texts, um, but they can still read it on Imgintai, which is sort of safe to yeah. be around. And even if you open it at work, it's like, I'm still on Imgintai, but I'm reading the really dirty stuff. <laughs> um, yeah, and we also um, introduced a um, sex education category shortly after, um, where we speak about contraception, about the period, masturbation, HIV. Um, we had articles on porn addiction, on sex work, on the most famous genital hairdos, anything really. <laughs> yeah, so that was uh, the sexy part. So um, we still publish singles, so we still portray singles. We, uh, over the years, it grew, many teams contacted us, or many photographers, or many people that write, and now we um, portray singles all over Germany. We publish a little less than in the beginning because it's a crazy amount of work. We publish one, maybe two singles a week on a regular basis. And if you would um, go to the next thingy, sure. foil, I, whatever that's called. So here you see for <laughs> foil, I don't know. So here you see people. So we're online, as I said, for like five and a half years. And many people met their partner through our website. I, I think we have five, we portrayed 550 people by now, and about 30% found their partner on a Gegenteil. And the guys you see there, they visited us at the office, they, they had a baby. Um, she was like, this is still like my, the case that really goes straight to my heart. We portrayed her pretty much right in the beginning and we came in and she was like okay actually I just wanted to meet you guys I'm looking for a partner but I really like you guys so I wanted to meet you I'm a single mom I have like a, I have a child that's like six years old no one's gonna date me ever like I'm totally not interesting because who likes a single mom and then four weeks later she calls me and she's like I think I'm in love and then you know that happened a year later they're still together they just had a baby Ah, and uh, the guys, <laughs> and the guys up there, they, they had twins, girls, and they didn't call them Annie and Jule. I was mildly offended. <laughs> mildly offended. No, they're they're the best. I mean, that's that's what's always keeping us going. I think there's like 15 babies, many weddings. Not that a wedding is what everyone wants to reach when you have a relationship, but for whomever wants that, that's uh, cool for us. And yeah, so one single or two singles per week we publish all over Germany. And for the magazine part, we, we write articles and our staff writes articles about love, dating, 
heartache, which is very popular these days and the past years, about sex, about sustainability, and a lot about social uh, topics, and um, also about politics. We're, we're not afraid, you know, to have an opinion and to state this opinion. Um, for a year or so now, we have three people um, working in our office. The three people you see here that are not us. Um, and they, um, yeah, they basically run um, most of the content on Im Gegenteil. So that we have more time to actually, by now, have a business plan and take care of business. How, how does that go, by the way? Well, <laughs> um, in the beginning, we were really convinced that we would be able to earn money with the online magazine, but we figured out over the years that it's impossible. That's what we also saw with other mag online magazines, with friends of ours. It's just you can't do it. Um, you can make money that well, maybe two people can live, but not that you can actually like have employees, you know, or... Well, yeah, well, the things that you can do is like have heavy advertisement on the, um, uh, on the, on the page. Um, you can find an investor. We actually declined offers. Yeah. Um, you can try to get donations, which we didn't want to. And um, a lot of people told us to just charge for the portraits, which would, yeah, would have no. been a way. But that was the first thing that we said before we even came up with a name for the website. It's going to be for free. So that wasn't a way for us, really. So, um, yeah, um, that was um, one of the articles um, that was published about was like, hip, yeah, hip job, but no money, um, which was basically... Um, uh, yeah, the first three or even four years. That this was like after one and a half years and we still thought it's funny not to have money. I mean... Huh? Um, so what we now did, um, we chose a way that many other magazines chose as well. We took our skills that we gained over the years and we um, founded a content agency um, which is called Agentur der Herzen. Um, which means agency of hearts, um, and we yeah we focused on the on the skills that we already have. Um, so we do everything in the in the content chain from conception. We um, know a lot of people. We have all of our singles. They're really good looking, and they <laughs> they are up for being photographed. So we um, we have like a good good people um, influencer model network. Um, we create all the content ourselves or, or people do it for us. Um, we run social media campaigns and also take care of the distribution. Um, and we really tried hard, but I don't know if any of you ever tried to finish a website. Um, we, haven't, we, haven't succeeded. we haven't succeeded with our agency website yet, um, but we can happily announced that we have our first clients and those are really like it seems random but they all like we all f like we feel that all of them really fit well so we have um, the Berlin based um, Grill Royal um, restaurant group um, we're doing social media for four of their restaurants and content creation. as of July and content yeah. creation exactly um, we right now we work with the German Forest Rangers Association and what they know, it's really, it's, it's, it's a great job because we create all their content, all their pictures and every, all their texts for them. And it's about preserving the woods. It's, yeah, it's and about preserving And yesterday we were like woods. in the dickicht, very deep. We were in the, <laughs> deep in the woods and it was uh, like the forester would explain to us which trees take, make the better air. If I start to explain it, it's very complicated. You can't I, even I, do it in German. I can't, yeah. No. Um, and... We did, like, like I, I tried to get the, the forest rangers to hug a very huge Eiche, but they didn't. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> and we also uh, started doing pieces on pregnant women that are in need of help, um, together with the German Federal Ministry of Family Affairs. Yeah. Um, Going into politics. Yeah, that's very important to us. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I think without this agency, it would have been very hard to grow. It's not our goal to become this huge company. It never was. But to actually, we always wanted to pay people properly. And all the interns and everyone that works for us, I think it's... We and never, ourselves. Yeah, and ourselves, of course, ourselves as well. But when I did internships when I was young, I was never paid or shittily paid. I worked 50, 70 hours, and that's pretty shitty. So... 
it's very important for us to make money and it's a little bit sad that you have to found an agency to querfinanzieren. Does anyone know that in English? Cross finance. Cross finance. Oh yeah. Wow. She lived in London, so she knows things. Um, <laughs> to cross finance the magazine im Gegenteil. Um, I think on one hand it's pretty sad, but we're very lucky because we love creating content. So for us, it's a you know it's it's a happy way to do it. It's a good way. Um, we. Yeah, as I said, we love creating, we love producing, and with agency work, like the minute in in your signature it says agency da da da, like you can charge double the price. I'm serious. It's like we're still doing the same thing. We always took good pictures. We would always write good text, but now you know you can charge way more money, and so we can finance the people working for us. And I think with the agency and with them gegen Teil, for us it's very important to um, yeah, get our core value out there and this is love and we will not work with any clients like McDonald's contacted us last year and we were like, very sorry, Yule is vegetarian, I only eat organic meat and they were pissed and we were like, yeah, it doesn't matter how much money you put in, you can't buy us for, for something like that. That's wow. <laughs> Maybe no. if oh, they tried hard on. enough, I don't know. I don't oh, know. I'm come just on. I'm just being honest. Come on, you would never do advertise or produce anything for McDonald's. I know you too well. So yeah, we want to spread love for each other, for ourselves, and everyone should for themselves. We want to spread love for the planet. We want to talk about climate change, spirituality, self-care, about politics, about all the important topics um, that are happening right now and that we all should be focusing on. And we will continue doing that for many years and um, we'll still talk about sex when we're old, I think. So. Yeah, and that's where you can find us and um, uh, yeah. where you can reach us. That's the picture we sent out to get people to work with us. Yeah, works for the agency. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah, thank you very much if you have any questions. Oh, if anyone is single, you know, you can, up, can come up to us later and be, you know, we'll make it work. So yeah, that was that, our little speech about love and sex. And we're done. Thank you. I'm going to steal one microphone. I have to say, though, that McDonald's with the slogan, I'm loving it, or Ich liebe es, would have been a good fit, no? Yeah, well, yeah, well okay. <laughs> yeah, anyone wanting to, uh, like, Found an agency or has any questions for these two here? Experts in love for five years and counting, five and a half years and counting. Well, I have a question for you. So, ah, oh, sorry. Thank you very much. Um, it's awesome. And um, last Friday, we were sitting in a bar. There was one lonely guy, and he was reading Im Gegenteil by himself in the middle oh, of the crowd that's so sweet huh? on, the computer. on the computer with his laptop and uh, it was kind of sad but he enjoyed that website much more than the, the crowd around him um, and that speaks for your product <laughs> what <laughs> what I or oh, for the bar I what I was um, going to ask is like the people would write their own stories now right do you still need to write the stories for them? Still you need to do the interview or would they just write it up themselves? You mean the single portraits? Yeah. Yeah. No, there's always a team, a photographer and a writer um, visiting them at home. And it takes about roughly about three hours um, to get to know them and we take a walk around the block and really get to know them. That's really important to us because, um, yeah, um, I think you can only like have a certain quality if you do it yourself um, and it also gives us like a connection to the single so whenever they meet someone they let us know and somehow it feels like it feels very intimate and, and they trust us and like when we finish a portrait we send it to them so they can look over it and you know take out anything they're not happy with so that's how they have to be happy what maybe has not been too clear to people who don't know your platform what happens after the publishing well there is a contact for uh, oh, uh, on the technical side okay so um, the, we have a server and they get like their email inbox we 
we put it up and they get a login so that they can read the messages and they will change the password as soon as they have it and we're not at all you know involved in the mails they get or in what they do afterwards but for us it was very important when you write them in the contact form that it doesn't go to their personal email address because if it goes to the personal email address you write back from your personal email address and it's still the internet you don't know who is writing you Mostly on our websites, it's totally non-creeps, and I think like for the 99.9 percent. .9%, but you never know, you know. And we always encourage people, like if you're on the website, the first contact has to be through an imgegenteil.de or .com um, address, so they're safe. Yeah. So what happens after they find love? <laughs> well, 30 percent. 30 percent. That's pretty good. I love your KPIs, by the way. You know, like 15 babies, three marriages. <laughs> um, anyone else has a question? Yeah. yeah I'm gonna kind of ruin this whole sec. So you need with some numbers questions. Um, yeah. like I've got a twofold question. So first of all, you mentioned that people are free to send any kind of contact request to anyone, right? And you don't track any of that. Like, how do you know that the users are satisfied that they're getting the value out of it, they're getting their matches? So we have portrayed in five and a half years, 550 people. We're all in a Facebook group together. They all have our, have our contacts. And whenever it, it happened like two or three times that there was an email or that something happened, you know, they didn't like, and they will immediately contact us. For us, spreading love is very personal, you know, and so we b have this personal relationship, even if another team portrays them, we will send them the foreshow. Yeah. yeah, the preview, the preview of, and we will be in contact, so they immediately contact us if they have any questions. All right, and did you have any problems regarding to the GDPR and the regulations, because everybody is able to post their pictures and the personal information? That Jule might be able to answer about the DSGVO, no? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, DSGVO. You did that, and she was she was like whining about it for half a year, like, oh my god, this is so. And I was like, D don't, I just don't want to know. Just do it. So, did did you do it? Yeah, for those who don't know, it's just like a data protection law in Europe that's been there for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Um, <clears throat> I'm not 100% sure that our servers are considered as conform to that, um, but we changed the, the contract that the people sign when they, they have the shoot. Um, we, yeah, they are allowed to take down their photos whenever they want to, um, and otherwise we delete their contact information after a while. So, yeah, um, have to double check our servers. <laughs> All right, thank you, thanks. Are there other questions? If I don't see you, scream. Oh, okay, I saw you. Um, I wanted to ask if there was a particular reason people sign up to the site. I mean, what was their, their motivation to join uh, in Gang and Child instead of other uh, dating sites or, or platforms? Um, I think it differs. Um, for most of them, we feel when, the, when we read their application and when we read them that they're really um, frustrated with online dating apps. Um, they've done that, they've been there, they, they, yeah, it didn't, didn't satisfy them. Um, so they're looking for more in-depth relationships. Um, and it seems the way you like the way we show them also encourages people that write to them in to to reply to them in a in a sort of similar way, very personal, like writing long messages, you know, like opening up. Um, on Tinder, and I I've never been on Tinder, but I've heard that, that that's a lot of hi. You like crazy used my Tinder back in the day. <laughs> Um, so people will write like, hi, what's up? Hi, how are you? And that's that for the introduction. And on im Gegenteil, the mails are just so different. People will relate and will write about what they read. And so you get maybe, or I think that's what we hear, or that that's what we get feedback, a deeper connection right from the start. Thanks for holding that. Um, and also I think uh, the other part of the, the people, maybe like a third or a fourth, um, signed up everywhere. And um, it's just using all of it uh, to meet new people. Um, and also, we're not against 
partnership. We're not against Tinder. We're not against like ads in, in newspapers. Um, there's a niche for everything. And um, I think we have a particular one. Um, yeah. Um, is it a question? Yeah. I was just wondering, so if, if you're browsing the singles photos and you wanted to write somebody, is there a form they fill out? Is there any kind of vetting process? Or is it really just a blank email they're composing? No. I mean, at any length or, or what Ma kind? Maybe Yula can uh, skip back. It's, it's a contact form. It says, so you write in your name, your email address, and then you can, like, do you see that? Name, email address, then your message, then you have to do this to verify yourself and then you can put in a picture. You can or are you required to? You no, you're not required to. So do but you know what what like how many responses do your oh the God, average single it's, get? It's yeah, there is no average single. So so much we learn. But um, if we're on that topic, um, Let's just say for women, 35 and older, no matter how they look, no matter what they do, it gets much harder. And also our website shows the same thing. Although we chose to be in slow dating, you know, and to be different, we can't control who writes and who will not write. Let's just say a guy mid thirties with a beard and glasses and somewhat cute might get like 300, 400 messages. And yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it, and, and a girl, um, 25 might also get like 100 messages, but there's also people that get two or three messages or even some that got none. Um, but what makes me really happy is that even the people who got like one or two messages, this there was one message out of these that was really great and they're dating this person. So for us, it was always, it's not about quantity, it's about quality. So that's... Data. Do the singles close that information to you? Like how many yeah, people if they are writing? Want, like, they, like we're not going around asking, but we meet, like especially in Berlin, you know, you meet the people again and, and you see them and they will let us know. And there were uh, some friends, or can we? Do we know? No, we actually were tracking how often the send button is clicked. Ah, we're tracking. I, I, I'm, I've never built a website, I've never, I've no idea, Yule does everything, I just write, so. That's why you're a team. True. Yeah, um, are there, uh, um, yeah. Hi, do you have, um, do you want to expand like beyond Germany, like English speaking maybe? <laughs> Well, we, we are also, we have people from Switzerland and Austria on the website, but it's for us, it's not possible to go to, for us ourselves, you know, to go somewhere else and do that. And we can't pay people properly. And it's hard to find the right photographer and the right, pe the people that write, because for us, it's not just, it doesn't just need to be great photos and a great text, but people need to feel very safe when someone comes by. So it's not that easy to find people uh, to work with us. So yeah, for now sure. it's just Germany. I'm sorry. But Berlin, no, 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 it's, <laughs> it's not. Maybe I just later. want to understand because Berlin got so international like in the last few years. And then I was wondering like, because probably there's market for you guys. In the yeah, many people from other uh, companies, from, from, from other countries, many people from other countries are contacting us and offering us and want us to do this, but we're like, we want to grow slow and steady, and that's our pace. We don't want to have this huge bubble. That's not what we're interested in. So for now, it's just here. Well, I think it's great. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we were actually planning on expanding in 2014 after the Guardian article was published because so many photographers and writers contacted us. So we had Israel and South Africa running and some, some Asian countries um, and Brussels and someone in Brussels. Um, and we really wanted to push through with it, but when then we just found out, like, translating the website, um, dealing with all of this, it was just too much. We were doing all of the press work, we were do doing all of the um, portraits ourselves, um, and we were, like, close to burning out, really. So it was a really important step for us to decide not to do it. Maybe at some point, but really, I don't see it that much. <laughs> well, I think you were already pretty brave venturing out to Switzerland. I'm from Switzerland. We, we speak a very weird language there. We even so. went there ourselves to, to open up the country. <laughs> yeah, I know. So you survived. 
you know, but uh, also holding some of your first talks in English. So I guess, yeah, maybe there's a collaborator there. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's getting better. Okay, maybe one last question. Otherwise, I think, yeah, we're good. Um, we're good, yeah, but thanks so much for sharing. I think it's so interesting what you uh, <laughs>